Hello everyone, my name is Maxim Kalmatov and today I will present to you some of our work on using single cell multiomic data to study gene regulation. In a very simplistic model, we can view gene expression as being regulated by a set of transcription factors that can recognize and bind specific regulatory elements in the genome and through binding to these regulatory elements, transcription factor can affect the expression of its target genes or its regulon. Now, binding to the regulatory elements usually results in an increase in local chromatin accessibility, which we can detect using different methods such as ATAC-seq, DNA-seq, or various others. The change in RNA expression we can also detect using RNA-seq. Recent advances in single cell technologies have allowed us to profile both chromatin accessibility and gene expression in individual cells. So now we are able to infer transcription factor activities using two independent data modalities. We can use it to compare them to each other and see which one is more informative about the biology of gene regulation. And if two different methods don't agree with each other, we can hypothesize about the connection between the regulatory elements and the target genes. To do this, we analyzed single cell multiome data published by 10x Genomics that consists of around 10,000 peripheral blood mononuclear cells with granulocytes removed by cell sorting. We estimated transcription factor activities using the chromatin accessibility data with the Chromvar package and using the Regulon expression with the scenic pipeline. Now, when we look at the distribution of these two activity measures, one based on the Regulon expression and another one based on chromatin accessibility, for some TF, like TCF4, for example, we can see a simple positive or negative correlation that implies a simple role of transcription factor as an activator or a repressor. But for some transcription factors, such as SPIB or IRF8, we can see a more complicated relationship, where increased accessibility-based activity is observed in many different cell types, including all of the different myeloid cells, as well as B lymphocytes and plasmacytoid dendritic cells. But only in plasmacytoid dendritic cell population, this increased accessibility is translated into higher regulon expression. Or in the case of SPIB, there is also an intermediate state populated by B lymphocytes. This complicated relationship indicates a context-dependent activity of these TFs, or a presence of a poised state, in which a transcription factor might be present and bound to the DNA, but in the lack of certain regulatory context, isn't capable of regulating the expression of its targets. And in the case of TCF4, for which both types of activity are only present in the plasmacytoid dendritic cells, we can hypothesize that it is actively involved in forming this regulatory context that is required for activation of the regulons of the other two transcription factors. And these results actually correspond quite nicely with some of the literature data on the differentiation of plasmacytoid dendritic cells. Interestingly enough, these cells can arise independently from either a macrophage and dendritic cell progenitor in the myeloid lineage or from a common lymphoid progenitor, with all three of the aforementioned transcription factors playing important roles in the process, and the TCF4, shown here as E2-2, being reported as one of the more specific and crucial transcription factors in the differentiation of PDCs. So, with this little example, we can see that integration of both data modalities to infer transcription factor activities allows us to make some meaningful conclusions about the mode of action of some TFs and of some more complex, context-dependent regulatory mechanisms. The specifics of how TCF4 is involved in forming the regulatory context that allows for activity of its partners is yet to be investigated. But for now, I thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.